teaching Sahih al-Bukhari in the Masjid of Imam Bukhari is not just life-changing for myself mm. in the sense that, listen, these are people who live. These are people, this is where he was born. His house is, you know, three streets down to the left of the Masjid. This is, you know, that's a, that's a totally different vibe. Oh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to Beyond the Member podcast. I am your host, Muhammad Basaeed. And today, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, I'm blessed to be joined with Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim in this very, very special episode that we have. Sheikh has come all the way from Australia to join us here in the UK. And I'm hoping to have a great conversation with him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Oh, I've watched a few of your uh, oh, podcasts, mashallah. Oh, mashallah. Always nice and lots of entertainment and levity. So, Alhamdulillah. And also great benefit, mashallah. Na jazakallah khair biya. Jazakumullahu khairan. I mean, we appreciate the feedback, Sheikh. Allahi barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, how was the travel trip here to the UK? Wallahi alhamdulillah. Yani, um, you know, the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, it might be something of benefit to others. Anytime you're traveling, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leaving on Hijrah, he uh, looked back at Mecca hmm. and his heart was, uh, I guess, in an upheaval of, you know, traveling, leaving his 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 place in the sacred house of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he said, Wallahi lawla akhrajuni ma kharajt. Had, had I not been, you know, forced to, you know, kind of make this journey, I wouldn't have left. No. Um, and Allah reveals in near the end of Surah uh, Al-Qasas, Inna alladhi farad alayka al-Qur'an daraduka ila ma'ad. Uh, Allah swears by himself that surely the one who has brought down the, the necessity of this Qur'an upon you, which is what forcing you to leave because of your teaching of the Qur'an, mm -hmm. he will return you at an appointed time. Huh. So this becomes a sunnah that whenever you're leaving somewhere and you want to return back to it, yes. that you make that dua. So uh, every time, you know, I, I'm leaving the house, uh, but any time that I'm leaving Green Lane, I make that dua as well. <laughs> oh, so may Allah grant khayr and barakah to the community and the, and the brothers and the sisters. Uh, may Allah lead us all to good. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Jazakallah khayr. And while we are actually actually on the topic of traveling, is mm. what I wanted to discuss with you. And um, I've been uh, looking through, obviously, your social media platform, and I've been checking out heritage tours. All right? Yeah. And um, Allahumma barak this gone to so many different cities you know and um the first question i want to ask you about it is what inspired you to start traveling to all these historical islamic uh sites <laughs> so believe it or not yeah. i was having dinner with a friend okay and we were at a thai restaurant right spicy food and all that kind of nice <laughs> nice stuff and as we're uh eating he's like uh I say, you know where I'm going to go? He goes, where? I said, I want to visit uh, Uzbekistan. I want to go on the Silk Road. They have great food. <laughs> so it began with like a culinary pursuit. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know I, I hear the Silk Road. They come somewhere. But I also want to go to Bukhara. Could you imagine like reading Bukhari in Bukhara? Allah, okay. He goes, I'm coming. When are you going to go? I said, I don't know. <laughs> when do you want to go? He goes, oh my God. I'm, and then as we were sitting there, I texted, he texted, just a bunch of friends, let's go. Mashallah. And we got like 18 people. Oh, mashallah. And he, okay, we're going, where are we going? Okay, let's, uh, you know, and I said, well, look, you know, we're going to go rediscover our heritage. He goes, that's it. We'll call it a heritage tour. SubhanAllah. And uh, we went to Bukhara, uh, to Samarkand to Tashkent in what is present day Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. Now teaching Sahih al-Bukhari in the Masjid of Imam Bukhari is not just life changing for myself mm -hmm. in the sense that, listen, these are people who live. These are people, this is where he was born. His house is, you know, three streets down to the left of the Masjid. This is, you know, that's a, that's a totally different vibe. Oh, yeah. And that masjid, it used to be a temple. Mm. 
And when Islam entered, and you, you can almost see the Sanad, you can almost see the name of Imam Bukhari, Muhammad ibn Ismail. And then you get to his name, Ibn Marb, you know, his great grandfather was a, a Zoroastrian, somebody who, so like two grandfathers back, this was somebody who, and then you look at the masjid. So in the architecture of the masjid, the new Muslims, you know, they have come into Islam. Yeah. So when they're decorating the masjid, because it's like 13, you know, 1200 years old in certain sections, some of the decorations are alluding to the previous tradition. Mm. So they have these two upside down triangles that touch in the middle, which represent uh, a, a butterfly. Okay. So in Zoroastrianism, they used to believe that butterflies, when they get singed, they carry the prayers up. So when they first built the masjid, these are new Muslims. Yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah. So they had the decoration of these, there's no faces or things, just two upside down triangles that represent the dua being carried up because they just didn't know any better. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, definitely. SubhanAllah. It's, it's life changing to stand then in that same masjid. Yeah. And to know that's where Genghis Khan walked in. And he beheaded the Imam leading Fajr prayer. And another brother steps forward and continues a prayer. 56 Imams until Fajr was completed. And not one of them just ran from the prayer. That's, that's a different experience. It's different, yeah. It's, uh, so that's how it began. How do you make Bukhari relevant? Not mm. just the Hadith, but how do you make the per the persona that this is a person? Yeah. Uh, you know, people like, oh, Imam Bukhari was a muhaddith. Yeah, but he was also uh, a perfectionist in so many other things. So some of the students of Imam al-Bukhari, they would say after Fajr, he would make his dhikr of Allah while he would uh, shoot archery. Oh, and he would not leave hatta asaba mi'a until he hit a hundred bullseye. Wow. So it's like. Bukhari was a gangster, yeah. man. <laughs> like on another level. You know, wow. he's not just so he wasn't just precise in the narration in the yeah. So then we study the life of Imam al Bukhari. It's, a, it's another it's another level of just you know I've taught you know Bukhari, uh, you know hadith of uh, Kitab al Iman or Kitab al Ilm or Kitab al Adiyya or you know yeah. you teach that, but when all of a sudden it's relevant to context, mm. to place, and you understand why Al Imam Al Bukhari organizes his Sahih that way in accordance to his lived experience. You know, why is the first chapter of Sahih Al Bukhari the beginning of Revelation? Mm. And why is the Senad of that Hadith, everybody in it is from Quraysh, everybody's Meccan? Mm. Because he wanted, I mean, he's not Qurashi. Yeah. But he wants you to know that Islam all began with this, revel it was revelation. And it's the hadith of Aisha, which is, you know, Mursal Sahab. Aisha wasn't alive then. Like she wasn't present. Yeah. So she's learned this from the Prophet oh. Sallam, on another date. Mm. And it's as if Al Imam al Bukhari is telling us, listen, you haven't lived with the Nabi. Sallam. Oh, the so. one who's telling you, even she wasn't there in the beginning of Wahi, but it's still relevant. Yeah. Wahi is the beginning. SubhanAllah. That's amazing. It, it's, it's just so much. So when you, and then you're, you, you know, you're sitting there in that masjid. Yeah, yeah. Where he used to sit, where the ulama gathered, where Imam Muslim sat at his feet. Where at Tirmidhi, you know, there's the city of Tirmidhi. It's yeah. like, what? That's his city. That's Imam at Tirmidhi. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, Sheikh, uh, uh, the, it's like, it's so rich in history, you know, and um, I, I want you to um, kind of explain how the importance of the Muslim mm. knowing Islamic history, mm. you know, because it's uh, maybe it's not something that a lot of people discuss or maybe a lot of people know. Yeah. You know, well, our whole ba our whole basis of faith is looking at precedent. Yeah. So Allah says to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the one who strays from the path of Ibrahim. Even you, Ya Muhammad Allah sets Ibrahim as a goal for the Prophet to mimic no. and to follow. So, Suhufi uh, Ibrahim wa Musa. And those Suhuf, those books of Abraham and Moses had been altered and lost, non-exact. So, 
But we always look, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Lead us to the straight path. Whose path? صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمِ It's a past tense. The path of those who came before us through your favor of faith. Yeah. So we're always people who are looking to the past. You're, we, you know, we follow the, the concept also of, you know, in our tradition, we follow our Qur'an and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. And we model it with this concept that there was a Salaf. There was somebody who showed how to live it. Yeah. So yeah, I want to know how did where did Abu Bakr go? Where, uh, you know, where where did uh, radiAllahu anhum? Where did they travel? Where, you know, you you'd be shocked that you know we pass through uh, when you travel to Uzbekistan. It's one of the destinations, mashallah, we travel to. There's a pass in the middle of two mountains. Yeah. A at the moment, it's called Timur's Pass. Timur Lane was one of the great conquer Muslim conquer. Depending on how you read history, is. A villain or he's a you know but that pass is the same place alexander the great accessed china mm. genghis khan and also the sahaba muslim ibn qutayba abdullah ibn umar and this is the place that they were snowed in yeah. so abdullah ibn umar for six months he was caught in like the areas of azerbaijan and he couldn't come back and it became balad al sabr you know we talk about siberia mm. as being the land of sabr mm. so the sahaba they weren't you know they got caught they couldn't come back through the snow because this pass had been and then you, there you are going by train going by bus you're passing through the only opening in the mountains that human beings have asked access for millennia. So our Sahaba were adventurers. Mm. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas to the outskirts of, of China. You know, radiallahu anhu, one of the Ashr Mubashireen, Sa'd ibn China. Uthman ibn Affan sent a Quran all the way to Tashkent. You know, there's a Mus'haf that is, it's called Mus'haf Uthman. But whether it's, it's, it's the first copy of it or it's copied from it, yeah. It's debatable, yeah. but is it from the time? No doubt, no doubt. You, you know, and it's amazing when you when you stand in front. It's unbelievable. So our history is built on knowing where you are from, even if it's not ethnic. Mm. So there might be a, a you know a Muslim brother who enters into Islam from say um, Nubia or uh, Iceland. Yeah. Uh, my ancestry is not, uh, my blood is not Muslim in that sense. Yeah. But your collective conscien consciousness is. Mm -hmm. So the moment you enter into Islam, you enter into the thought of Islam. You enter, my Nabi is not Muhammad Sallallahu alone. It's Isa mm -hmm. and Musa mm -hmm. and Dawood. And I want to travel where Moses traveled. I want to experience where Dawood alayhi salam fought uh, Goliath. Yeah. I want to, you know, where, where where did these people uh, live and 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 lead their lives, and what were the challenges that they faced that we still face in our own life? Mm. So you don't know who you are until you know where you came from. Sah. Subhanallah. And history repeats itself, and mm. that's the message of the Quran. The stories of the twenty-five prophets and messengers are the same stories we all live through in our lives in different ways. Yeah, yeah. and it's always um, because you you sit through a lecture or you will listen to a, a khutbah or a reminder and it's it's words and it's it's like maybe it's hard to imagine you read a book for example but mm. when you're actually like you're there you know it must have some effect on you you know um in in a different way you know even maybe perhaps to say that it could in, uh, in essentially boost a bit of your iman a hundred percent, absolutely. Mm. Uh, look, the Prophet ﷺ says we do not travel for worship mm. except to three places. Uh, you know, Mecca, Masjid al-Haram, the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ, and Masjid al-Aqsa. But we are asked to travel as acts of worship, not for salah, mm -hmm. but as the pursuit of learning. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you travel for learning, Allahu lahu tariqan in al-jannah, the Prophet says, the one who salaka tariqan, the mm -hmm. concept of salaka mean the one who journeys for knowledge. Yeah. Allah makes a path that is easy for them towards paradise because you learn in your journey more than you will learn out it. And the concept of rihla yeah. has always been a part of Islamic um, educative processes and pedagogy for us as Muslims.
Huh. You have to travel for faith. Like our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had to climb up the mountain to receive the Quran. Allahu Akbar. SubhanAllah. And he it, had to be in a, it's not in the comfort of your own bed. Yeah, SubhanAllah. You ha he climbed up, you know, Jabal al Nur, sat in that cave. It, it, it puts you in a place where you are uh, communing with yourself, with your thought, with your behavior in a different way than you would where you're in your comfort space. No, mm. you mentioned um, the three uh, sacred mosques, mm. and I know you have a sacred mosque tour. Yes, right. And um, what I want to ask you, apart from the three sacred mosques, mm. where has been your favorite destination? Like a place where you look forward to going every time you hear this is where we're gonna go. I can't wait to go there. <laughs> so I've taken five different groups. Okay, to Bukhara and Samarkand. Yeah. And that's not accidental. Okay. There is, uh, so uh, Uzbekistan is the fourth safest country in the world. Allahu Akbar. Uh, they were dominated under a communist authoritative, you know, the Bolsheviks came, the Russians, that World War II, they carved up, you know, China took away, may Allah free the Uyghur people. Allahumma amin. They were annexed. So East, East Turkmenistan is really the other side of Uzbekistan. It's just another part. Um, that, you know, they were just swallowed up and then the Russians swallowed up Uzbekistan. How did Islam survive? That the mindset shifted. Okay, we can't talk about Islam, but we will talk about our Uzbek culture. Mm. So they built this framework of Islam by establishing the rituals that Muslims do as being the rituals of Uzbek culture. So the Karam, the... Uh, deference to uh, leadership and authority of the one's father and mother. Mm. Uh, there's no hanging out. It, it's amazing that they don't have the, um, you know, everybody gets married at 21. Wow. There's no homelessness. Wow. There's not a single person who will beg that is an Uzbeki. Mm. So there's people that who came who are not from there. And then you, you've, you've never seen somebody put their hand out and give... The concept of paying more as like a tip is, yani, it's insulting. Wow. <laughs> uh, let me give you an example of the honesty that we experienced. There were in one of our first trips, one sister, as, and it's always sisters, subhanAllah. <laughs> sisters, mashallah. One of our sisters, she left her new iPhone okay. in the market. And when I say the market, I'm talking like, if you've been to Turkey, yeah. you, know, you, you know markets, like mm. marketplace, busy and... She left it on, on one of the stalls or the cat. She was looking at something and just left it there. An hour later, she's in the bus and we're heading towards, you know, a different place and a different, you know, we're about an hour away. And I could hear a little bit of kerfuffle with some of them. What happened? Ah, oh, Sheikh, you know, the sister, she left her phone. I said, where? In the market. So one of the guides, uh, a brother, a dear brother named Aziz, may Allah grant him success, mm -hmm. our local uh, guide there, historian, mashallah. Mm -hmm. He says, "Oh, okay, no problem. It'll be in the hotel." So I, <laughs> wow. So I, so as a, as somebody who takes people on, I, I was like, "Don't promise something." Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Inshallah, we'll do our best to see." You know, and then we go back up to the front. He goes, "No, no, no, it's in the hotel." I was like, "Come on, man." The lady in the stall. Yeah. The bus left. She did what an Uz, what a Muslim does. Mm -hmm. She took it. She went to a taxi. She said there are these Americans, Canadians who came and visited. They were on a bus. Can you find out where they're from? <laughs> they find out. They they find out we're staying at the you know usually it's at the nicest hotel the five star hotels there's yeah. only a few of them okay and we got there and the phone is there the taxi driver refused to take payment subhanallah because they paid him he said no 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 they already paid me we don't know if they like he can just you know double his money yeah but that's not the way they think. The ethics of Islam became a part of their culture. Uh, we put our shoes in the shoe rack in the masjid. Yeah. When we come out, none of the shoes are in the shoe racks. They're lined up on the floor facing the exit. You just slip your shoe on and leave. 
سبحان الله اخي اتس انذر ليفل برو اتس انذر ليفل سو بخارا سمرقند تاشكند then i i you know we'll i i don't even know where to begin when you're talking about the history standing under the minaret of yeah, bukhara i seen that subhanallah where genghis khan came and he destroyed the whole city except that minara you know and the minara that it's written you know the verse that was chosen when they first built it mm. was a ayah from surah yunus um And it was because the person who built it was scared that if the minara fell over, that the, the sultan would be upset with him. Mm. So he chose a verse that, you know, would put a little bit of rahmah. If, if any harm was to touch you, it's because Allah caused it. So it's like he was saying, if this, but subhanAllah, the people of Bukhara, when Genghis Khan came and killed all of them, They would look to that minara that Genghis Khan said, no, don't destroy this. It's such a perfect building. We can use it to look and see if enemies are coming. So the people, when they would see the writing, it would give them hope that whatever harm is there, it's Allah. Aji. It's Allah who will bring you out of it. Two generations later, two grandchildren later, who is it that rebuilds Bukhara, rebuilds the Masjid of Imam Bukhari, Masjid Qalan? It's the great granddaughter of Genghis Khan. Surprise. It's amazing. Surprise. The one who came to destroy from from the 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 seeds of evil is the flower of peace. Is the flower of iman. It's amazing. Subhanallah. Uh, so that's an amazing journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow allow us to return again Allahumma. to benefit them as well Amen. because in them seeing our Islam in them seeing that there are Muslims who are caring Uh, when we visit the the place of Imam Bukhari's burial, yeah, you know, and you chronicle the last days of life of Imam Al Bukhari and the oppression he faced, it, as a Muslim, it gives you hope and strength. Subhanallah, that the likes of Imam Bukhari who is so celebrated today, yeah. he endured so much, yahi. And when he was buried, and then the Russians came, the people of Samarkand hid his grave. They actually made it into a rubbish heap so that nobody would go to look there. And the Russians kind of, you know, they wanted to find, didn't know. It wasn't until Suharto mm. of the Indonesian president, he was on a trip to Russia. He said, listen, I want to know, I want to know where Bukhari and, Tir you know, these books and I want to travel there. They say, look, we know where we don't know where this Bukhari guy is. So they got their Russian scientists and couldn't find him. The people hid him <laughs> until they were assured that it's a Muslim president yeah. who wants to come and pay respect. Mm. And if you let us know where it is, we'll make sure that it is an endowment and that it will become under your care, we're not going to do any anything to it. Hmm. So when they got that assurance, subhanAllah, then they showed this is where Al-Imam al, al he came and visited. And the Indonesian government is the one who purchased that land, wow. made it a waqf and built another, you know, a masjid Masjid's... in Samarqand that until now, it's now, uh, it's now the University of Hadith. Kulliyat al-Hadith is now established near the uh, Kartakh, Kartang, yeah. depending on the pronunciation, yeah. outside Samarkand by about 40 minutes. Wow. Where students from all over the Central Asian and European countries, the Mufti of Bosnia, the Mufti of uh, Russia, all of them train there. SubhanAllah. Subhanallah. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. An incredible journey. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I, can, I can only imagine, you know. Um, and, and, you know, this is, uh, it's not a place that, is on people's lists of traveling to yeah you know which is uh sad you know but inshallah And that's the whole basis of heritage tours so some of the places we'll be going inshallah next year is yeah. we're going to islamic ethiopia wow <laughs> so we're doing a planning a tour of where the sahaba landed where an najashi lived wow where he's buried where is the first masjid even before the masjid of quba is the Masjid of Jafar ibn Abi Talib, yeah. Uthman ibn Affan. When they came, they built a Masjid to pray in. It's still known. 
Allah Akbar. That like the area is still known. It's not an ancient structure, but that place on that coast is another wow. level. So we want to, inshallah, uh, make make that one of our trips, inshallah. I look forward to seeing that being advertised. Yeah, inshallah. yeah, inshallah. Inshallah. inshallah, inshallah. Now I want to talk about, um, you know, of course, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, the Muslims we travel to Mecca, we go to mm. we go to Mecca to do Umrah, Hajj, and Medina to visit the Prophet Alayhi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to talk about Aqsa now, mm. um, and uh, I don't know if I'm correct in saying this, but it sometimes feels not not much not many people would making more of an effort to travel to Al-Aqsa. Mm. You know, um so I'll ask him how how is it that we change this? You know, at first correct me if I'm wrong in, mm. in my statement, of course. So sometimes you you know there's a little initially uh I was a bit anxious. Okay. Should I go to Aqsa or not? Okay. Because you hear from one group of some of our Palestinian brothers, you shouldn't go. It's supporting uh, injustice. Yeah. Then you hear from another group of, uh, please come, mm. please go. Mm. Uh, they need to see that we care about this place. Yeah. And in my heart, I was like, I'm going to go for myself. I want to see it first for myself. Not, you know, so Allah opened a path that, you know, in 2018 or, uh, you know, I, I, I visited and it was life changing. Mm that when you meet the people of uh, Al-Quds and their need of us visiting, because not all of them have access to the masjid. Some of them are neighbors, they can't go pray. Yeah. So you come to Salat Al-Fajr and it's you and your group that are Ya'muru Masajid Allah, who are, you know, fulfilling that ibadah. And it's a powerful thing. So it's important to, uh, I understand both perspectives and I have a great deal of respect for both opinions. Mm. But from my experiences, I have felt that the hadith of the Prophet Rihal, that setting a niyyah of travel for worship, yeah. he specifically mentions Al-Aqsa. Yeah. And he's not mentioning it just at his time. And there are, you know, the concept of wanting purification for yourself. Why do we call it Al-Quds, the Holy Land? The concept of Quds is that when you arrive there with the intention of ibadah, your sins are forgiven. Yeah, and it's 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 a level that is not found in other localities. Yeah. Just setting the intention to come there for ibadah and to enter udhulul sujada. Mm -hmm. You know, the the previous generations and and ummah they were ordered to enter it. Qulu hitta, say we have come in repentance. Yaghfir lakum khatayakum. When that ayah, and then you walk, and the door is called Bab Hitta. Subhanallah. This is the gate where the ancient city they entered from that gate. Udhulu, you know, it's just wakulu wakulu Hitta. Yaghfir lakum khutaya. So that's you know, uh, there's so much history, and and you know, Isa alayhi salam and and Zakaria. The the tour that I do, I blend between two journeys. Okay. So we do a study of Surah Maryam mm -hmm. and Zakaria. Yani, you literally, we take, I, I lead a walking tour of the house of Imran. Wow. This is the, the, the home of Ali Imran. Because it's known, it was known to them. And it, in, in history, it was always known. This is the, the, the quarter of the family of Imran. Yeah. Uh, Maryam, she uh, moved herself from the quarter of Imran and she went a little bit further. So then you walk out the gate of Al-Asbat, you take a right along the, uh, the boundary wall of Al-Aqsa mm. and you cross a road and there is the garden where Maryam alayhi salam used to go for her dhikr. Wow. It's another <laughs> level, Akhi. That's where Jibreel enters into this garden, into this area, into her mihrab. Mm -hmm. And she's, uh, yeah. you know, so it brings to life yeah. so much. Yeah. And that, that's the thing, bringing it to life, you know? Yeah. And it's uh, definitely, um, it, it would be a different experience, a whole nother level. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there isn't a place in Masjid Al-Aqsa. So Masjid Al-Aqsa isn't a structure. Yeah. It's the whole of the top of the mountain. 
Mm-hmm. That's all of that is Masjid al-Aqsa. Now in Masjid al-Aqsa, there are 10 or 11 different musallas or, or masajid. There's al-Masjid al-Qibali, mm. the Masjid of Umar, uh, the Dome of the Rock, Masjid al-Rahma. You know, there's all the Masjid al al sakhra Masjid al-Buraq. There's all these different structures that were built. Yeah. But anywhere on the top of it is Masjid al-Aqsa. And the Prophet ﷺ said, there isn't a hand span or in riwayah a foot span on Masjid al-Aqsa, except a prophet and messenger has prayed or an angel. Allah, okay. <laughs> so, so yani it's uh, an incredible experience. From that and then trip. meeting the people of Aqsa is, yeah. subhanAllah. And that's what I kind of want to ask you, you know, you've went there, you know, mashallah, tabarakallah. What would you say from your visit to Al-Aqsa, what has to be the most memorable thing that when you left, you said, I will never forget this? Um, it was a couple Okay On their day of nikah MashaAllah <laughs> The struggle To make their nikah in Aqsa SubhanAllah uh, he, The brother had to get permission To be able to enter She has to get permission To be able to enter And it kept getting delayed But rather than make their nikah Outside it they persevered to have the honor and the, 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 you know, even though some of their family were not going to be there. Yani imagine your father can't join you because he hasn't been given permission. So I would rather honor my deen, honor my masjid, honor my life with that and do it on our own right. than party outside and it brought to life the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, the Sahih, Riwayah uh, of Abu Dawood, that there will come a time where to own the width of a whip, you know, just a little stick, and be able to stand in that little width of a whip. وَيُرَى مِنْهُ مَسْجِدَ الْأَقْصَى خَيْرٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا Will be more valuable for you to have that little piece of property, this small piece that you can stand in it and see from it. Masjid al-Aqsa will be more valuable than the world and what is in it. <laughs> so yeah, so that that uh, young couple, man, yeah. oh, they hit your heart, man. And it, then you see these, you know, every day there's these nikah and they wear their traditional red and white and... That story it's, has a happy ending, Sheikh. Yeah? It's amazing. Did they get the nikah? They got their nikah. They made it. We made dua for them. We gifted them. You know, uh, my personal experience is that I gave a shahada at Masjid Al-Aqsa. Allahu Akbar. To a Palestinian sister. Okay. Who had a friend who was uh, a Muslim. Mm. Muslima. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so she would listen to some of the discussions that we were making. Now, those who enter, they have to be Muslim to enter into the Masjid Al-Aqsa area. You get tested as you're going in, say Fatiha or Ayatul Kursi. And okay. So when she would come, she would come with her Muslim friend. And because she looks ethnically Muslim, she would put on her hijab. And while we were doing our lessons inside the masjid, they would sit and listen. And many of the Palestinians, mashallah, they have great uh, literacy skills, great mm-hmm. education. Um, and they understand English as a second language, mashallah, as a, uh, really well. So they would, we, we, at first I was like, who are these people, you know, just listening in, listening everywhere we go. Yeah. And then, uh, she said, her friend came and said, uh, my friend, she's a Palestinian. Uh, she's not Muslim, but we've, you know, I've been teaching her about Islam and she's been listening to you guys for two or three days. And she just said to me, she, I look over and she's crying. I want to be Muslim because I was teaching the life of Maryam, the life of Isa. Yeah. Samawatu wal ard. Uh, you know, the heavens are rip apart that they rahmani that they claim that, you know, uh, God has begotten a son. So it, it, it struck her. And she said, I want to be Muslim. Can you ask him? <laughs> So I said, yeah. And I said, but look, I don't want you to publish, you know, where she said, don't publish her face or any. And we said, no, no, we don't want to record it. And, but I will record it just for her. Mm. I was like, okay. So 
inside Al-Masjid Al-Qibali, under one of the pillars, sat with this sister and gave her her shahada. Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. Allah. And I felt this sister, subhanAllah, Allah drove me all the way from Australia. That she's sitting there, she, she would come from Yafa, you know, yeah. all the way, every day, just, oh, when is the next classes? And every day between Maghrib and Isha, and they have to struggle to get back, and subhanAllah. So that was uh, another incredible experience, mashallah. That, yeah, that's got to be... Uh, yeah. Allah yuslah halha wa halna, ya Rabbi. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. Now, um, going back to traveling, Sheikh, you know, traveling um, teaches us a lot, mm. you know, struggles and whatever you, may have, you, uh, you have for you. And also when you reach a destination and then you meet the people there. What can you say is, um, what can you say traveling has taught you? Because you've traveled a lot now. You Alhamdulillah. Know? Allahumma barik. So one thing that traveling has taught you. Um. I want to say it in the correct way. So I, I got to think about it a little bit. Yeah. It's nice. um, to take everything in stride. Mm. Uh, you know, when you do your first Hajj and you learn about patience a little bit and you learn, uh, you know, somebody took my seat or the hotel that was took supposed to be ready is not ready. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, claustrophobic and, you know, sometimes there's these challenges. Mm. And then at the end of it, as you stand there in Arafah and then Maghrib set and you're like, wow, oh, you know, it's, everything is forgotten. It, no, it's like nothing um, has occurred. So when you travel, uh, it is قطع من العذاب. There's always going to be something. A bag gets lost. Yeah. Uh, you're in immigration sometimes in certain places longer than you you would like to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, Allah musta'an. No. But uh, because the niyyah is for Allah Azza wa Jal, mm. what separates it is the travel that we're, you know, we want to be engaged in is not just, I want to take an Instagram photo. Yeah. Oh, look how nice the masjid is. Mm. Look how nice, uh, oh, look at the tiles, right? It's It has a greater purpose. So, it, it taught me that if you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the object of your pursuit, yeah. everything else falls into place. Yeah. But if you put the dunya as the object of pursuit, I want that nicest sunset, which you, you can have. Yeah. But if it's not going to cause you to reflect yeah. on the maker of it, the destiner of you standing there and not somebody else, the... If you're not going to have that moment of reflection and pause, then it's not as worthwhile mm. as it would be. You will benefit from it, but not as much as uh, having good company in your trip as well. You know, when there are people who are traveling to Bukhara because they want to eat Bukhari rice, <laughs> it's different than people who travel to Bukhara because they want to learn about Imam Bukhari's life and the tradition of, of the Sunnah yeah. and have Bukhari rice. Because yeah, there's some serious rice, bro. I've heard. <laughs> you, you know, there's some serious, like Bukhari rice, where Bukhari, you know, yeah. where it's 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 made is another story. Ajib. Yeah. And uh, you touched upon this, you know, uh, when you were mentioning that um, traveling and companionship. I want you to, um, uh, inshallah, share with us, uh, um, some great companionship that you've, um, perhaps companionship came from traveling. Mm. Or this person who was a great companion while you've traveled or wherever you've gone. Tabarak uh, al-Rahman. Most of those who travel, so we, we've done Bosnia, we've done Turkey, different parts of Turkey. Yes. So we did this, uh, the city of the prophets where we go down to Urfa, Urfa. which is the land of Prophet Ibrahim. Yeah. Mesopotamia and mm. you know you're literally in the same place that they used to worship their false gods you see that the 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 ruins of those temples yeah. where they worshiped uh, Cyrus and the stars and the moon and and then you reflect upon the story of Ibrahim we do um the the journey of uh Turkey and the Ottomans expanse and you know the conquest of Istanbul—that's a totally different flavor of Turkey. Mm. 
uh, Bosnia was, uh, you know, uh, right after uh, the celebra the the memorial of the Srebrenica massacre. Yeah, twenty seven years ago, thousand tens of thousands of Muslims were executed. Yeah, not not killed, executed, blindfolded, handcuffed, murdered. And, and then you stand in the same factory where that happened. You see the shoes that they were walked to their death with, subhanAllah. It's something that is unbelievably moving, humbling. Mm. And you reflect upon it in a way that we will never let this happen again to any human being. Not just Muslim. Yeah. We have to stand on guard. So it makes you extra wanting to protect uh, the Rohingya and Central Africa and uh, the Uyghur people and, and, and it, it, it puts in your heart. But those who travel to these localities always travel again. So I've never had a person who's traveled to Umrah or Aqsa or Bosnia, except that they are repeat because of the companionship yeah. that they have with each other. And they're the ones who actually now plan it. So they're saying, okay, Sheikh, no, we've been to Bosnia. We've been, so we're now going. So our WhatsApp group from like 2018 is as active today as the first day. MashaAllah. You know, who gave birth? Who did this? Who, da, 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 who graduated university? Who's? Yeah. Uh, the people who, uh, families who hooked up their children, you oh, know, wow. like ones in, uh, we had a family, MashaAllah, from France. Who traveled with us to Bosnia and family from Boston. Uh, even the upcoming trips are, I think, 18 different countries. Wow. You know, people from Australia to Malaysia to Singapore to USA to Canada to Finland to wow. Denmark, UK, mashallah, Birmingham people, mashallah, they always show up, <laughs> alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah. So the companionship is discovered because the the hearts are all yearning for the same thing we all want to be better and closer to allah mm. and we build uh with each other a relationship that is for allah for the love of the masajid for the love of our history for the love of our deen for the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and wherever we find uh hearts that are not we address it we we're here for allah so yeah, mashallah. It's a beautiful thing. And and the thing that I always love that you say when uh, when you're traveling, you say you love two things: you love traveling, and you love people. Yeah. And and that's what what makes Allah. You know, and that's what makes it. You know, and uh, Alhamdulillah, it's been um, absolutely beautiful. And I know you mentioned um, uh, traveling to uh, Ethiopia. Mm. Inshallah, is there anywhere else that is on your list that's yes. coming next? For the <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Uh, we do. We we like to take the off the beaten path. Okay. <laughs> All right. So every you know, mashallah, Andalus. It's beautiful Spain. We'll yeah. do Spain as well, but we do Turkey and all that. So we're doing Islamic Ethiopia. Yes. And we're doing Islamic South Africa. Wow. Cape Town. Mashallah. Johannesburg. Uh, the Muslims who arrived there. Some of them arrived for four hundred years ago. Malaysian wow. sailors, Surprise. Indonesian sailors. Surprise. Some got lost, <laughs> you know, land on shore. And their religion was their life. Yeah. It brought Islam to the people. Yeah. It's a uh, phenomenal. Uh, we're going to do a well being retreat in uh, Malaysia. Nice. You know, Malaysia is not just, you know, shopping, and, and but there is so much uh, within how Islam entered into Indonesia and Malaysia and Sarawak and, and these kind of places. So I want to open up destinations that people want to travel to. You know, yeah. you want a beach holiday. And yeah. because we're not for, pro we're not profiteering. Uh, that, yani, alhamdulillah, it's not, you know, we're not a travel agent who's like, you know, so we limit the numbers. Mm. We make sure that we, uh, defer some groups travel to other dates because they're not going to meet the mix of who we're traveling with. Oh. So if I got like 20 people who are all young and <laughs> and then there's this auntie and uncle, I say, I'm sorry, uh, Hajja, yeah. I would love for you to travel with me. How about you book this oh, instead? How about we've traveled in three months time to yeah. this? 
And I'm very upfront with it. I want you to have a great time and I want other people to have a great time. This isn't going to be the right trip for you in this moment. Mm. So because we kind of uh, take that in, into uh, our mind, uh, those are some of the key destinations we want to also do, inshallah, in Africa, the West Coast. MashaAllah. So, uh, Senegal. Yes. You know, um, Timbuktu. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Tanzania on on the other side. On the other side. Yeah. Uh, we are doing a safari as well, inshallah, in Kenya and, and so you, on. I was waiting for you to say Kenya. Kenya. Here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because you just yeah. give us a shout when you go. So, you know, I wanted to save the best for last. <laughs> so we want to do, inshallah, Kenya. Nice. And a safari with that. No, inshallah, yeah. you need to hit me up when you go to Kenya, inshallah. I mean, most I mean. of my family live on the coast, mashallah. Allahumma barik. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, it's been absolutely amazing spending time with you. Allahi uh, barik. And I hope to spend more time with you, inshallah. I mean. uh, and I wanted to ask just one more question, inshallah. Mm. And it is just literally yeah. final advice for anyone who's watched the episode mm. and hear you speaking about traveling, Islamic history, companionship, everything. What kind of final advice would you like to give before we conclude the episode, inshallah? Uh, you have a passport, use it. <laughs> Wallahi. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, you know, we're saving our money for, you know, greater and better things. Yeah. But releasing tension, releasing pressure, mm -hmm. uh, getting out there and seeing something different, mm -hmm. taking the misses, taking the children on an adventure yeah. pays in dividends. Mm -hmm for many years to come wallahu ta'ala a'lam uh, also we know from the life of all of the messengers of allah that yeah. they traveled yes there's not a single messenger or prophet in our traditions in our books and in our sources that did not travel yeah. in pursuit of knowledge in pursuit of a better place in pursuit of meeting someone mm. You know, Musa travels to Al Kahf. It's Jumu'ah. Yeah. Uh, he traveled to meet Al Khidr. Who's this guy? Yeah. Who's this guy that knows more than I? I want to meet him. Yeah. So it's not just about the ilm, but the the journey. Mm -hmm. And he took with him companions. He took with him Yusha. Yeah. They lost the fit. You know, it's just the 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 evolution of your life. Its betterment and enrichment is in using what Allah has provided for you to enrich your mental health, enrich your uh, spiritual growth, increase your children's familiarity with the Kaaba, with the Masjid al Nabi. There's the Kaaba. Yeah. You know, you can touch it. Yeah. This is where your Salah is. So I'm, uh, all my children grew up traveling with me, my wife and I. So Jeez. it's, uh, uh, it's something perhaps I'm biased, but I believe it is the best way to bring yourself into each other as a as a unit that you have the conflict mm. don't, oh, don't touch my leg when we're trying you know <laughs> baba i don't want to sit next to him you sit in between us <laughs> and then you resolve that conflict that it makes you stronger and grow better <laughs> it builds the resilience <laughs> Jazakallah khair wa barakallah afiq alhamdulillah wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, that inshallah uh, it concludes this uh, episode of Beyond the Member. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost for allowing us to be here and inshallah those who have watched have benefited and I also would love to sh thank the Sheikh for coming here and blessing us with his time of course and like, traveling you know the theme of traveling uh, traveling all the way to Birmingham <laughs> mashallah tabarakallah uh, until the next episode uh, I've been Muhammad Basaid here with Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim subhanakallah wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfirullah wa tubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh